It all starts with people. There are around 7.2 billion of them. A lot? Historically speaking, yes. Our grandparents were born in a world of 2 billion, our parents in one of 3 billion, more than double that, and here we are. How are all these people distributed around the globe? Let's start with the giants, China and India. Remember how back in grandma's time we had 2 billion? China and India today have more than half of that each. We are speaking about 1.3 billion people per country. That adds up to an impressive 2.6 billion humans in just two countries. That's more than a third of the globe. Take the continent they're in, Asia, and you got a staggering 4.2 billion people. You know all these shiny continents we have? Yeah, more than half the earthlings live in a single one of them. That leaves us with another 3 billion. Where are they? In decreasing order, Africa with 1.2 billion, Europe with 750 million, North America with 550 million and South America with 400 million. Oh yeah, I almost forgot about Australia. They have 36 million. Population wise, Australia is not more than a rounding error. On to the economy. Did you notice how Africa has about the same population as North America and Europe combined? Economically speaking, they're as big as France. That's why Africa is such a suffering continent. Their economic output is tiny compared to their huge population. Whereas Europe and Japan are producing too few children for their economies, economic growth of Africa is having a hard time keeping up with its population growth. Africa's population tripled since the 1970s. If it would have stayed constant back then at around 400 million, Africa today might well have had a nominal GDP per capita equivalent to Russia's. By the way, for all you economic newbies out there, GDP is short for gross domestic product of a country. In simple terms, GDP is a measure for the amount of all final goods and services produced in an economy. Another way to see it is, a nation has people. People need things. Putting aside wealth, inequality and trade deficits for a moment, the higher the GDP, the more things and hence the more wealth people will end up having. GDP can also be seen as the economic power of a country. There are several ways to measure it and there is a healthy amount of criticism around the concept of GDP. For the purpose of this video, we will ignore all of that and consider nominal GDP to compare countries. So, who are the heavyweights in the ring? Let's start with the size of the world GDP to see how much we have to work with. The entire world produced 74 trillion dollars worth of things in 2013. Two countries out of around 200 make up the bulk of this number. Number one champion is the US with a whopping 18 trillion dollars in GDP. This is around a quarter of what the entire world produces, which is why we should all be concerned with who runs this economic powerhouse. Number two is China with currently 11 trillion in GDP. Around 15% of world output but rapidly increasing. Hence, together the US and China make up for around 40% of the world's economy. If we go by continent, however, Europe leads the way with an utterly impressive 24 trillion in GDP, which is around a third of the world output. The EU, which is a big chunk but not all of Europe, makes up for around 20 trillion of those. Note how this is more than the US. The EU would be dominating international economic discussions if it weren't split up in all those frustratingly small countries who decided it would be a brilliant idea to be run by grey-haired bureaucrats. Next. Oh, yeah, Australia. GDP of 1.8 trillion. Rounding error. Seriously, Australia, you are just large, mostly empty with deadly nature. What are you doing in this video? Next. Companies. When comparing the US with, let's say, Nigeria, you need to wonder what makes the US GDP so huge. There are many angles from which that question can be answered. One of them is companies. There is Walmart, Apple, ExxonMobil, Microsoft, GM, GE, Kraft, Google, and, and, and. All US companies paying US taxes, mostly. Apple has a yearly revenue of around 230 billion dollars. That alone is half the GDP of Nigeria. And the cash Apple sits on is eight times Nigeria's foreign reserves. You want more fun facts? Okay. The market capitalization of Russia's entire stock market is around half a trillion dollars. Take or give, depending on the current oil price, weather and political outlook. You know what else would cost you around half a trillion dollars if you bought it today? Google or Apple, or Microsoft, the US has huge successful companies. And economically speaking, their CEOs are often more influential than many heads of state. All these companies are really missing is their own army and 
Right. Back to business. If you do the math, you'll find that Apple's revenues are around 1.3% of US GDP. If you think that's much, try VW of Germany. Their revenue stream is 8% of the German economy. But even that doesn't compare to the mother of all country dominating companies, Samsung. South Korea ain't a small country. They have a population of around 50 million, which is more than some entire continent, and a GDP of 1.4 trillion. Samsung runs around 20% of it. When you think Samsung, you think smartphones. You're not thinking heavy industry, ships, banking and insurance conglomerate. Together with its peers, LG and Hyundai, the South Korean economy is pretty much run by three companies. The title of this video is misleading. It is called Numbers You Should Know. But knowing any of these numbers by heart is useless. They keep changing all the time. But once you know their magnitude, you will get a lot more perspective.